This is King Noble Black Supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to talk about the demonization of R. Kelly by the media and the glorification of Hugh Hefner, a nigger versus his master. That's what I call this. This is a case of a nigger versus his master. How does it weigh out? R. Kelly has come up in the media as being some type of sick, twisted cult leader with sex slaves, sex trafficking being attached to his name, mind control manipulation. It's a matter of how many negative words, stigmas can you put on a black man at one time? I mean, they've tried each and every one of him. Each and every one of them. I mean, they've called him a pimp. They've really called him everything but some type of Satanist. And I'm sure that's out there as well. But he's been demonized. For what looks to me like a polygamous marriage. Like a polygamous relationship. Where he controls his household as a man. He has several women. It's just like a black man in control of his household. He don't want their parents all in his business to destroy his relationships, to interject their opinions, and to allow their traditional views to destroy what he's doing. So he... makes it so that it's limited contact for that specific reason. Because they can potentially destroy these relationships before they can grow into something fruitful or positive. I'm hearing one of the sisters there, he's been with her almost 30, over 30 years. So it sounds like there's some consistency here. It sounds like there's some st stability and structure. But their biggest fear is a black man with any kind of power. See, we think they just fear a black man, you know, getting guns and becoming some type of terrorist, speaking out against the government, or whatever. But that's just not true. They fear the black man with any kind of power, any kind of power, because they feel like once he gets a feeling of any type of power, gets back in control and authority, any type of rulership position in his life, that eventually he's going to wake up to those other things and become a threat to white supremacy. Ultimately, the black awakening is the worst thing that they could ever imagine. So. They've taken the power that he has in his own household, in his own business, and literally demonized him. It will make some ask, well, what type of man would you expect him to be? What type of control would you expect him to have within his own household? Then if you switch on the other page and you look at Hugh Hefner with the Playboy Mansion with the youngest as women can possibly be, they're there particularly for sex, for nudity, for pornography, for objectification. Specifically, that is their purpose. That is why they're there for no other reason. They're all Hugh Hefner's Playboy Bonnies. There specifically for sexual pleasure and the enjoyment of Hugh Hefner and all his associates, affiliates, friends, or anybody who who's worth so, who anybody who's somebody enough to get in the mix. And they never say, you know, all oh, Hugh Hefner is manipulating them because they do want to be famous. They want to be somebody. They want to be associated with Hugh Hefner and be associated with the Playboy Mansion. And that's not looked at as manipulation. That's just a business. That's just how it goes. 
and it's clear to everybody that they're going to be used sexually. And if anything that they want to achieve as far as their image, as far as becoming somebody in the industry or whatever, they're going to have to be a Playboy Bunny. If they want the money, the fame and all that, it's not looked at as manipulation. He can be direct, Hugh Hefner. And he can manipulate in the open. So it's not even manipulation. It's not taking those women's desires to, to achieve something specifically. And his power to provide that. And his control over the situation of which he provides it. It's not looked at manipulation. Hell, it's just a Playboy Mansion. It's just Hugh Hefner. It's what white males do. It's how they get down. Never one second called manipulation. Some of the greatest of politicians and political figures and rappers and actors, statesmen, go and visit that mansion and are affiliated and associated with that. No problem. This is a good thing. Hugh Hefner was glorified for his entrapment of women for their materialistic desire, their desire for notoriety, notoriety, fame, luxury, validation within the industry, trapped them. And could be looked at as a predator, an entire different narrative that could be added to Hugh Hefner, who just died recently. An entirely different narrative could be added to him. But it won't. And some book could come out with women exposing him and talking about, you know, a lot of the women was younger. You know, a lot of things that went on. And I'm pretty sure that'll get swept under the rug. Because Hugh Hefner was glorified for what he was doing. I mean, it's white male, alpha white male. Glorified. But then you go on the other hand and you look at R. Kelly, who's simply just running his household. Called the pimp. He hasn't made any money off these women. Nobody even know of him. He's not selling women. I read the whole BuzzFeed document. These are just his women, and he's basically just controlling his household. Managing his home. Developing relationships with these women. They may have started off wanting some type of fame or, or their music careers. But they might have got with R. Kelly and he may have enlightened them. And they see what an enlightening and a powerful black man this is. And they give up those superficial desires and decide to be a part of what he's doing and see the bigger picture. Of where he's going with it. They say, well, he's manipulating them. Completely negative, but we don't see the manipulation. We don't see the usage as much as Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner would be a million times worse if we applied the same narrative that we did R. Kelly to Hugh Hefner, but we don't even see. A semblance of what Hugh Hefner was doing. They say he controls how they have sex and what they eat and when they leave. What black man do you not expect to have fucking control over his goddamn household? If I remember, it said R. Kelly's houses, R. Kelly's homes. What black man do you expect to not have fucking control over his goddamn house in 2017? Well, I forgot we still we still supposed to be niggas. Control, authority, black man. Just not a good look. 
Then you had the parents on the side who's hyping all this shit up because they wanted to use their daughters to manipulate R. Kelly. But when they see he was a master manipulator of the situation, not so much of the women of the situation, then they got mad because their tactics didn't work because they were sending their daughter in for their own manipulation. The fame and success, what they wanted, and they already had control over their daughters in a certain type of way that would guarantee what type of vested interest they put in or what type of benefits they wanted in the future. Because if they want their daughter to be a singer and, and to be famous and be all this, surely they see something on the other end of the pipeline for themselves. So they were they were very manipulative. But when they see that that doesn't work and that R. Kelly's a little bit more sharper than that, then they get mad and they run to the media and play demonization of the black man for being in control. They didn't get what they want or it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. Their manipulation failed. So they run, they run and, you know, pull the black demonization card. The one that was used with Bill Cosby. That's, con that's constantly used against a black man. Because if you have any authority as a black man, clearly you're some type of predator. You're negative. What type of black man do they fucking expect you to be? If he wasn't in control of his household, would he be more liked? Would that be a better image? Then we got to ask who the fuck would he be and what would he have? <laughs> if he really operated like that. We have to ask these questions. We listen to the story. We hear some some horrible, horrible glitches in the story. For one, he, he supposedly has control over these women. And he has sex with them. He records it. He records having sex with them. And then he supposedly shows it to his friends. But then you hear this other story that says he has his women fully covered in jogging suits when they're around other men so that none of their form or body could be seen. And they must face the wall to not even look at other men. When they're around other men, he don't want them to be seen by men. Wait a minute, that don't. OK, over here, you recording them having sex and over here, you don't want them to be seen by men. Something doesn't make sense. It sounds like a put together story. Of demonization. And now it's contradictory demonization. So now over here is it's oppression. See, they can use they, they can just pull every narrative at once when it comes to demonizing a black man over here is. Putting their bodies out there and objectifying them by recording sexual engagements with them. And then over here is, is, is it sounds Islamic, like women oppression. Don't talk, don't show your body, you know. So how can you demonize them from both ends of the spectrums at the same time? If that doesn't expose itself, like just in case you are into, you know, you're against sexuality and you're more conservative they got that narrative for you okay he he's he's having having sex with them and recording it and showing it to his friends so you're gonna be hurt by that one you know you're gonna be like man that's horrible but then if you're more liberal and you believe more in sexual freedom then over here he got them covered up in jogging suits so no one can see their form or see how they look and they're, they're, they can't interact with other men or and they have to just look at the wall. So either side you want, they got something in there. They got a special demonization packet package narrative for you. That's strategical to demonization. So it's going to appeal to you from one end or the other.
Now, with this, it, it, the, the law doesn't matter. When it comes to the, the, the demonization of the black man, it transcends any legalities. It has nothing to do with law whatsoever. And they're willing to go beyond the law. When it comes to demonizing the black man, they're above the law with their ability to do so. They won't stop at the law. The fact that these are consenting adults and they agree with being there, that doesn't mean nothing. This black man is the devil. He's the ultimate evil. Period. They're ready to overthrow America, make America change its laws and policies when it comes to attacking a black man. For even though y'all say this is legal, this is wrong. He's using some type of mind control and this, that, and the other, and, and just the ultimate demonization. So they want to not, now they're saying, look, since we can't use the law, we're going to attempt to destroy his entire career, use attack, we're going to use defamation. We're going to totally try to obliterate and destroy his image before the public. Since we can't use the law to take them down. They keep bringing up something that happened. In the past. A case. With him supposedly pissing on some 14 year old girl. He was acquitted of the charges. But he keep getting retried over and over and over in the media. Forever. Forever. They don't accept the law when a black man is found innocent. Look at Bill Cosby mistrial. The judge just had to push it. He just could not accept it. We have to we, we have to go with this. They sound like they want Bill Cosby locked up. It was a hung jury, but they they wanted to end up with a hung Bill Cosby. So when a black man it's innocent. They push the system. Hell no. Nah. We got the no, no, no. They still, they can't accept it. But when a black man is locked up that didn't do anything, everybody's fucking quiet. That's just how the system go. But if it's one that you've demonized that walks, then you're doing everything. You're finding all the extra buttons and extra glitches and loopholes and tactics and methodologies you can to destroy a black man. Why you you glorify Hugh Hefner over here for doing the same exact shit and really worse. Because he was in the business of marketing sex and any young and impressionable woman that walked through his door that he felt like was marketable was fair game for him. And he was a worldwide global accepted white pimp. He was a white pimp that was respected to his death. This is a fact. So I just watched him throw every negative thing that you could say about a black man. I just I just watched him throw it on R. Kelly, man. I just sat here and watched it. Every negative thing you could say. They just they they, they threw it on him all. He's all these things at the same time. If we keep getting caught up and riding the bandwagons of the demonization of black celebrities. Of black men. We can't really say that we really want change in society. Because this is where we really meet the need for change. This is where we really confront. The old paradigm versus a new paradigm right here. At this R. Kelly situation. This is where we confront it to say, hmm, how are we going to look at this? Most people, because I was on YouTube watching, 
they all rolled the bandwagon against R. Kelly. You can't go back and use these other cases against him and apply that to right now. Applying his old songs, his relationship with Aaliyah, and bring all that up in order to put a certain narrative on this situation that's going on now. And that's what I saw happen. I just saw people condemn him to hell. Period. Without even really investigating or getting full information on the situation. Most people didn't even read the article on BuzzFeed. They condemned him to hell immediately. And that's the problem that the black man suffers from in America is that he is condemned to hell immediately. The jury, after deliberating over the evidence, could not come to a conclusion based on Bill Cosby. But the world had came to a conclusion based on Bill Cosby without even viewing all of the evidence. Meticulously. He was condemned to hell from the beginning. R. Kelly was condemned to hell as soon as the rumor and the gossip got out. These women are into what is going on in R. Kelly's home. They're into that. Stop pretending like women cannot be into what R. Kelly is doing. That this is not what they want. That this is not what turns them on or floats their boat. Just so you can demonize the black man. Because if they're doing that with the white male, if they're doing that with Hugh Hefner, it's okay. For a grown ass woman to be somebody's playboy bunny in a mansion. That this is fine. But they couldn't possibly want to be. Living in R. Kelly's house. And be under the construct or the paradigm that's going on there. It's impossible. And then you play how smart the black woman is. And how dumb the black woman is when it's convenient. And I'm going to end the video with this. But I have to touch on this. That you actually insult the women in this household. When you say that they are being manipulated as though they are so damn stupid and so dumb. And by default, you're saying the black man is so smart and so intelligent. Oh, really? That's he just manipulating dumb black women. That these the black women is so dumb and so goddamn stupid. That they just going along with this thing that R. Kelly got going on. You insult the intelligence of the black woman at the same time. And most black women will go for that. Even though they know better themselves. Just to ride the bandwagon of the demonization of the black man. They'll just go with it. That these sisters are so dumb to be manipulated. By R. Kelly. But when we talk about the manipulation of the black woman in society. You say we just talking that black stuff. And we just reverse racist. And we just won't get over slavery. But you say here that they could be so easily manipulated by this black man. Then I got to ask you, how easily is the black woman manipulated by white society? How easily is the black woman manipulated against her family, against black nationalism, against her black community by the corporations and by the institutions of white supremacy? Don't just Make her manipulated when it's convenient by a black man who you are intimidated by the amount of power and wealth that he has. Don't just say she's manipulated then, but now when it comes to white man's society, she's intelligent. She's a genius. She's brilliant when it comes to working along with his institutions. She's smart. She's making the right decision. But she's not being manipulated over there. You tell me, when can somebody so goddamn dumb as you portray these black women in his house as the black woman is being portrayed when she's with a black man who has power and authority? Tell me when a black woman that is so dumb, when is, can, she, can she or is she not being manipulated? Is she being manipulated at work, at school? Is she being manipulated by child support, court, family court? 
Is she being manipulated by the policing institutions within our communities, law enforcement? Is she being manipulated by the corporations? Hmm, interesting. Only some black man like R. Kelly could really manipulate or. That's the only window of manipulation. Because they so dumb that they could not consciously be willing to be a part of whatever he's establishing. But I'm sure the women in Hugh Hefner's mansion were so smart that made excellent business decisions. They were smart. They knew what they were doing. But over here with R. Kelly, nah, you're gonna, you being with a nigga today, you're going to be with a nigga and what a nigga is establishing today, any nigga, you, you got to be a dumb motherfucker. Because the black man is not shit. And everybody knows it. That the black man ain't shit in this country. So you gonna go be under a nigga that's blah, 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 blah. You gotta be a dumb bitch. I reverse it. I said, if you gonna be under the white man, you, you gonna be under your slave master. You gotta be dumb. And to work with your black man and what he's establishing and what he's building. In a black kingdom, you gotta be pretty intelligent. This King Noble Black Supremacy, join my website, www.kingnobleuncensored.com. Follow me on Instagram, kingnobleuncensored.c.o.m. Subscribe to my YouTube page now, King Noble Guru. Hit the like button. Donate and don't hate. Black Supremacy.